In this brief video, I'm going to show you how to create a human skin shader using Vray material. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Vray for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 13 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Vray for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this lesson, we have this 3D scan of a head, which is a free 3D scan from 1024.info. We have four different dome lights, each with a different HDRI that give us different lighting and we can switch between them to see if the shader holds up in different lighting scenarios. This 3D scan comes with a few textures that will be used in the process and you can find them in this head folder in the text folder of the project files. Let's create a new Vray material and assign it to the geometry. We can start interactive rendering as well. Now first let's add a Vray bitmap node. And load this head underscore color texture. As this is going to be used for both the diffuse color and the subsurface scattering color, let's change its color space to sRGB. And to get more details out of the texture, we can decrease the filter blur 2.5 and connect it to the diffuse color input of the very material. A skin shader is mostly subsurface scattering based and not diffuse based, so we can come over to the refraction tab. In the translucency section, change the type to subsurface scattering. Let's increase the subsurface scattering weight to a very high number like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 or even 0 0.9. Uh, but 0 0.8 is probably enough for now. We just need a bit of diffuse color contribution to preserve some facial details. Also, we can change this illumination method to directional. I think we didn't talk about this illumination method when discussing translucency in the very material a few lessons back. The illumination method here determines how direct lighting is computed for subsurface scattering. The directional method tends to propagate more light in the direction from which the surface is lit, and the uniform method spreads light more uniformly inside the material. It's like the phase function parameter inside the fast SSS2 material that we talked about in the previous video. For now let's use the directional method, change the scatter radius color to this orangish red with the RGB values of 255, 85 and 60. Now we can try increasing the scale value to get what we want. Probably around two centimeters would be enough. And now let's connect the head color texture to the subsurface scattering color input as well. Okay, not bad. The next step is to add the normal mapping. So add a very bitmap node. And load this head normal texture. Set its RGB primaries to raw and decrease the filter blur 2.5 for a sharper texture. And connect it to the bump input of the very material. And now we can work with the bump amount. It's better to actually dial in your bump or normal mapping at the start before working on your diffuse color, subsurface color, or anything else, as it's easier to see the effect of high frequency bump or normal mapping on a simple surface with no subsurface catching or other effects. I think around 0.4 would be enough for now. And now we have the reflection and coat layers to deal with. 
let's set the reflection color to white and enable use roughness. As skin is mostly water-based, we can set the IR to around 1.33. For the reflection roughness, let's add a very bitmap node and load this image that is called head spec. Set its color space to raw and its filter blur to 0.5. And if you take a look at the texture, uh, we clearly need to invert it because the lips, for example, are having this white color, which results in a very rough reflections if we connect this texture directly to the reflection roughness input. And we want those areas, obviously, to be very sharp. Therefore, the colors need to be darker in those areas. So add a remap node after the texture. So we can invert the texture and control and adjust the overall sharpness and roughness of the skin by making the texture darker or brighter. So first invert the map and now connect it to the reflection roughness. So the reflections are a bit sharper than what I want them to be. So let's try to make them a bit rougher. It could work obviously for certain cases, but let's go for a drier skin for now. So I'm going to select the second point that control the darker values of the texture after inverting it and set it to around 0.5 to get a brighter texture and therefore get rougher reflections. It seems to be very dry, but we'll be adding the coat layer on top of it, which will make the whole thing a bit sharper. So let's add coating. I'm going to set the amount to around 0.6 IR to 1.33. It doesn't necessarily have to 1.33 the IR for the coats layer. You can obviously creatively use the IR value to control where that sharper layer of reflection would show up on the face. But let's just go for 1.33, which is the same IR value as the IR value for the reflection layer. And for the coat roughness, as we want it to be obviously sharper than the reflections, I'll be using a darker version of the node that is connected to the reflection roughness input. So add a color correction node after the remap node and connect the remap node to its input and connect the color correction node to the coat roughness input of the material. Simply decrease the gamma contrast value 2.4, which makes the texture darker and therefore it will give us a sharper coat compared to the reflection layer. And that's the final skin shader. Let's try some of the dome lights to see if the shader holds up. You can go ahead and play around with the shader and see if you can make it any better. Let me show you the final renders from these four dome lights.
Okay, very cool. So in this video, we'll learn how to create skin shader in V-Ray for Cinema 4D using V-Ray material. See you in the next one. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, and much more. See you in the next one.